As the king of pop, Michael Jackson's life often mirrored the life of the king of rock, Elvis Presley. There were also many similarities in the ways they died, and both Jackson's doctor and Presley's doctor went on trial. New at 5, Eyewitness News reporter Miriam Hernandez compares that earlier trial to the trial of Dr. Conrad Murray. What about flowery fields? Is there a time? A haunting ballad, his final song. Within hours of this rehearsal, Michael Jackson would follow in the path of his idol, the other king. And now, the end is near. So I Final For two icons, autopsies reveal stunning secrets. Their consuming desire to sleep and an alarming volume of sedatives in their bodies. People wanted some revenge. They, their hero had died. Uh, their icon had died. And certainly somebody had to be at fault. Dr. Forrest Tennant of West Covina testified as an addiction expert in the defense of Elvis Presley's physician, Dr. George Nicopolis. He was charged not with Presley's death, but over-prescribing meds in staggering numbers, 19,000 doses over the course of 31 months. Yet Tennant helped win acquittal, aided by these files, Dr. Nicopolis's medical records on Presley and Presley's autopsy report. Tennant has kept them for 34 years. A coup de grace comes in. When Elvis Presley died, he had 14 drugs in his blood and urine. The doctor had only prescribed about six of them. And lastly, he also had heart disease. But what about Michael Jackson's doctor, Conrad Murray? We asked Dr. Tennant, a veteran in doctor trials, to review Jackson's autopsy. He sees a red flag, a lung inflammation that causes shortness of breath. You can't have that kind of lung disease and not have terrible insomnia. And Tennant can conditionally defend Dr. Murray's treatment of Jackson with a sedative propofol. The fact remains is that Dr. Murray has safely and effectively administered that regimen for some time. What is missing in this case is what records are available. Why was this drug started in the first place? Another thing, there are no records. And if there are no records, that's, that's not good on the doctor's side. The lapse that may doom Murray's his tenant, nothing to show he ordered any tests, conducted any exam, or tried safe therapies before resorting to an extreme one. Tennant notes some unconventional treatments today are defensible. Had the charge involved pain meds, as in Presley's case, a 2006 California law would have factored in. Dr. Tennant helped sponsor it, the Intractable Pain Act. It helped win acquittal for Anna Nicole's doctor, Sandeep Kapoor. The act says that once you have tried the standard treatments and there is no known cure, then you can use whatever non-standard treatments that may work. Such a law, says Tennant, allows a drug-dependent pain patient to get supervised care and deter the hazardous practice of self-medicating. Tennant says it's time the medical profession tackle a similar law for insomnia. I used to dream. I used to glance beyond the stars. Miriam Hernandez, ABC7 Eyewitness News.